It's time for another Madden 21 experiment here on my YouTube channel. My name is Good Game Bro, and I got early access to Madden 21 thanks to EA Sports giving me an early code. And a big shout out to them because because of that early code, I can give you guys some really cool experiments. I did a couple of these on the YouTube channel last year, but I really want to ramp things up. So if you want to see more of these experiments or just videos on Madden 21 early on my channel, make sure you subscribe, leave me a little thumbs up, and don't forget to hit the bell notification. All that helps out a ton. In today's experiment, we're taking every single quarterback in the NFL and putting them in free agency. Why? Because I want to see what team signs them and then what team can win a Super Bowl and with which quarterback at the end of the year. And if you've got a really cool idea for a challenge I can do at Madden 21, leave me a comment down below and tell me what that challenge is, how I should do it, and maybe I'll give it a shot and give you a shout out in a future video. And if you create a dope roster, especially on Xbox One, just let me know what the roster is, your username, I'll download it, check it out, and maybe we'll create a video off of that too. We jump into it, you can see that Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, everybody is in free agency. None of these guys are assigned to a team. All the top quarterbacks are every single quarterback, even the bums like Nick Foles and Mike Lennon, all those guys. They're in free agency, the rookies, everyone. Who's going to sign them? Let's find out. Now it's time to go ahead and see what each NFL team did from a signing a quarterback perspective. So the Bears... They didn't really get worse than having Mitchell Trubisky. They signed Josh Rosen and Blake Bortles, so not much change for them. The Bengals lost their young, promising quarterback, and they got Matt Barkley, who was once a young, promising quarterback, and was well, a 64 overall now. And then behind him, they got Jacob Eason, who's a rookie, so maybe he usurps him at some point in the future. If you go to Buffalo, they got Phillip Rivers, so he moves from Indy over to Buffalo. They got Jordan Love behind him, so they kind of have a backup plan after year one. Denver goes to Chase Daniel, and they get Jared Stidham, who was on the Patriots. The Browns get Alex Smith, who's coming off a devastating injury. We don't even know how he's going to be playing, but he's rated pretty low overall. And they get Nick Mullins as his backup. So a lot of these teams are not doing so good so far. The Bucks get Josh Allen and Dwayne Haskins Jr. I think they're in a decent spot. Josh Allen can fit that system pretty well. Dude's got a big arm, got a lot of great receivers there. Go to the Cardinals, they get Jalen Hurts and Marcus Mariota. Two guys that are mobile, two guys that can play pretty well if they're in the right system. And I feel like... That's probably the right place for them. The Chargers need to just move the whole team. I'm sorry, get out of LA. Go, don't go to San Diego. Just go somewhere different because no one's going to want to watch you play. James Morgan, Sean Kaiser. That's your quarterback? These two dudes? No way the Chargers win anything big. Where are the major quarterbacks? Will Greer? Jake Fromm? Go ahead, Patrick Mahomes. This is who you get? Colts get Russell Wilson and Carson Wentz? I mean, maybe their strategy was just like, we're going to go take two of the best quarterbacks out there so that no one else can have them. We'll pay a whole lot of money so no one else can get them. It's not a bad strength. Dallas gets Josh Dobbs, probably the smartest dude in the NFL. And Jake Ludden, no one knows who he is. The Dolphins go with Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. Good luck winning anything with either one of those guys. The Eagles get Deshaun Watson. I kind of like this a lot. And they get two behind him. I mean, I get it, but you need both of those dudes that share the wealth. The Falcons get Cam Newton and Jameis Winston. They could actually be pretty good there with Cam. So I, I like that pick a lot for the Falcons. 49ers get, I mean, Blaine Gabbard, I guess, returns back there. They get Jeff Driscoll, went from Florida to LA Tech, and then now he's here. So I don't think the 49ers are running anything at all. The Giants get Drew Locke, again, a good young quarterback, and they get Justin Herbert. So probably a quarterback battle is happening there more than anything else. The Jags get Patrick Mahomes. Baker Mayfield, you'll never see the playing field, I promise you. Patrick Mahomes there, I like that a lot. With that roster, they could do some crazy things. The Jets get Lamar Jackson. The Jets might win some football games, people. Lamar Jackson in New York? I like that a lot. Gardner Minshew, sorry, buddy, but no playing time for you either. Aaron Rodgers makes a whole lot of Green Bay Packers fans mad because he goes to play for Detroit now. So he's in Detroit as well as Matt Ryan. I would Matt Ryan sign there, who knows? But Aaron Rodgers, again, 90 overall guy there. You see Tyrod Taylor go to the Packers with Bob Griffin, a.k.a. Robert Griffin. Packers aren't really going to win many games with either one of those guys right now. The Panthers get Dak Prescott and Kyler Murray. Again, two young quarterbacks. I don't know why you spend money on both of them, but you do what you got to do. The Patriots get Matt Stafford and Ryan Tannehill. A lot of Titans fans are going to get mad, but I don't really see Tannehill playing there, and I don't know if Matt Stafford's going to really lead you to the Super Bowl, but I could be wrong. We'll find out in the simulation. The Raiders get Teddy Bridgewater and Sam Darnold. I like Teddy B a lot. I like Sam Darnold a lot. But I don't know if they're the best fits for that system either. Go to the Rams, they get... Oh my God. Nick Foles and Case Keenum. No Super Bowl for you. 
The Ravens get Big Ben, ate a lot of burgers, and Jared Goff. Not looking good. The Washington football team, they get Kyle Allen back, who was in that team. So I guess he went back there, and they get Mason Rudolph, so you're not winning any games. The Saints get Andy Dalton and Joe Flacco. The Seahawks get Jimmy Garoppolo and Joe Burrow. Honestly, if I'm them, I'm probably playing Joe Burrow over Garoppolo just because I think Burrow's a better overall quarterback. Saw what happened with Garoppolo and the whole, like, we're not going to let you throw the football thing. So maybe Pete Carroll trusts Garoppolo more than Kyle Shanahan did. The Steelers get Drew Brees and Tom Brady. I'm a Steelers fan. What is your strategy to take two 40-year-old quarterbacks with no one else on the roster? Who's your backup? What's your plan for next year? I mean, I guess if one of them gets hurt, the other one's Gucci, but that's kind of wild. The Texans take Daniel Jones. You see Jacoby Brissett go there as well. That's going to be a QB battle. I don't know which one of those guys I would take more. I think you're going to be pretty much in the same boat regardless. So Godspeed, Texans. The Titans are going to get Taysom Hill. <laughs> Look, a lot of you Saints fans are like, you want Taysom Hill. Okay, let's see. Let's see how good of a quarterback he is. He's an opportunity to start potentially here over Brett Hundley. I mean, both those dudes are fast. Godspeed. And then lastly, you have Ryan Fitzpatrick and Mitchell Trubisky. That's not exactly a quarterback duo that I would feel confident in if I were you Minnesota fans. So with all that being sorted out in terms of where each quarterback's gonna be playing this year, let's go to the end of the season, see where teams fall, and then go into the postseason, see who wins it all. So the end of the NFL season is here, and I'm kind of blown away a little bit. The Cowboys are your number one team, technically. The Jets with Lamar Jackson are right there behind them. <laughs> the Steelers, who had Tom Brady and Drew Brees, the same roster, go 10 and 5 and 1. 49ers, Panthers, Falcons, Saints, Browns. What? Bills, Rams, Broncos, Raiders, and Colts all end up going to the playoffs. The Patriots end up missing out on it, so surprise, surprise. Uh, the Eagles, Texas, Bucks. I mean, a lot of these teams were middle of the road and did pretty solid. Who is the worst team? The Bears aren't the worst team. Who's the worst team in the NFL? The Seahawks had the worst record? The Dolphins also tied with the worst record? The Jags? Y'all had Patrick Mahomes. Check the stats. So we check the passing yards. Phillip Rivers bought out 4,900 passing yards, 35 touchdowns. He had a lot of interceptions, but that's what Phillip Rivers does. I made a lot of jokes about Nick Foles. Some of y'all are probably going at me in the comments, but the Bears do for 4,600 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 14 picks. I mean, that's a year that I'm sure the Rams would take from him or even from Jared Goff. Lamar threw for 4,500 yards, 44 touchdowns, Lamar? Lamar went off, 44 and 11, that's unreal. Daniel Jones bought out, Stafford played actually pretty well for the Patriots. Russell Wilson had a heck of a year, threw a lot of picks low. Rodgers played well in Detroit. Josh Allen played extremely well for Tampa Bay. Patrick Mahomes, let's look at his stuff. 4,200 yards passing, 36 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He didn't play bad. It must have been either the rushing game or the defense that really let him down. Lynn Gabber, Matt Barkley threw for 4,000 yards. James Morgan? I was out here roasting him, and look what he did. That's a good year. And Drew Brees threw for 4,033 and 7. Sean Watson had a whole lot of interceptions with 20, but 26 touchdowns. Cam Newton had a great year, 38 touchdowns and 8 interceptions. Teddy Bridgewater had a pretty solid year. Chase Daniels played well. I'm kind of blown away. I mean, Josh Rosen, touchdown interceptions aren't great. Josh Dobbs? I said he was the smartest dude in the NFL. Dude has like a aeronautic or something incredibly intelligent that I don't have degree. 31 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, almost 4,000 yards. He had a heck of a year for Dallas. Drew Locke, Will Greer, Taysom Hill. Okay, he had 33 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and 3,700 yards. Jalen Hurts got some playing time uh, for Arizona. Had a solid rookie year. Dak Prescott played pretty well. Ben, eat a lot of burgers, had a good year. Only single-digit interceptions. Like, okay. Who was, like, one of the worst starting quarterbacks, though? Kyle Allen for the Washington football team did not have a great year. Uh, and then Tyrod Taylor had probably one of the worst years of all the starting quarterbacks with Garoppolo being right below him. I kind of called that one. So your touchdown leader was, again, Lamar Jackson, 44 on the year. Wilson uh, and Cam Newton tied right behind him. Your interception leader was Blaine Gabbard and Phillip Rivers with Deshaun Watson right behind him. I don't think anybody's really surprised by that. Sack leader was James Morgan, followed by Kyle Allen, and then Drew Locke pretty close behind him. It's kind of wild, but I want to know who you guys are most surprised by here because I'm blown away by a couple of these stats, especially what the Cowboys ended up doing this year. Your MVP goes to Lamar Jackson, so he gets the back-to-back -back MVP vote. Russell Wilson, Taysom Hill, Phillip Rivers, Cam, Patrick. I can't believe they went 5-11. and 11. 
Josh Allen, Daniel Jones, Teddy Bridgewater, and Drew Brees. And the coach of the year goes the man that will stare right through your soul, Adam Gase. So your playoff matchup for the wild cards will be Browns at Colts, Raiders at Broncos, Bills at Steelers, Falcons at Bears, Saints at Panthers, and Rams at 49ers. Let's see who advances. So in the wild card, Cleveland beat Indy. Uh, your Raiders are going to beat Denver. The Bills are going to beat the Steelers. The Bears actually beat the Falcons. I'm surprised by that. Carolina beats New Orleans. And the Rams absolutely destroy San Francisco. Sorry, Blaine Gabbard. It was not your week. So our matchups now in the divisional round are going to be the Bills and Jets, the Rams and Cowboys, the Raiders and Browns, and the Bears and Panthers. Let's see who advances. So in the divisional round, the Jets beat the Buffalo Bills. Dallas beats the LA Rams by dismantling them. The Raiders squeak out a win over the Browns, and then Carolina beats down Chicago. Then, in the conference championship, the Raiders end up beating the Jets in a big upset, and the Carolina Panthers beat the Dallas Cowboys, a team that had the best record in the NFL. They got dethroned. So that means your Super Bowl matchup will be Panthers at Raiders. Let's recap that roster again really quick. So again, Dak Prescott is going to be your quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. He's now up to an 89 overall. He's killing us so far this year, and you know I'm happy for him. For the Raiders, it is Teddy Bridgewater, a guy that a lot of people just said couldn't do it from the beginning, and then even after his injury said he'll never come back. And look at Teddy B, leading the Raiders to a Super Bowl, potentially. You care about the Pro Bowl? This is something that blew my mind. Josh Dobbs ends up going QB1 for the NFC. If you're betting in Vegas, you are not putting your money on Josh Dobbs being the number one quarterback for the NFC in the Pro Bowl. You didn't see Lamar Jackson on the AFC side, Phillip Rivers, Russell Wilson make it out on the AFC, and then in the NFC it's Cam Newton and Andy Dalton. Again, I'm blown away. And in the Super Bowl, Dak Prescott finally gets a ring. 28 to 13, they end up beating the Raiders there, and we can check the player stats to see how that ultimately worked out. Dak threw for 251 yards, four touchdowns, and a single interception. Teddy B had a pretty solid game passing-wise, except for the fact that he had some touchdowns and he got sacked three times. Christian McCaffrey had a pretty good game. Josh Jacobs, Josh Jacobs had a touchdown of his own. In the air, Henry Ruggs an eight for 74. Hunter Renfro, four for 61. Ian Thomas had a touchdown. You also see a touchdown by DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and I believe that's it, because I can't count. So there you have it. The Carolina Panthers and Dak Prescott are your Super Bowl champions. Dak can't get it done in Dallas, but he goes to Carolina and gets the job done. What was the craziest part of the video? Let me know by leaving me a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And again, my name is The Game Bro. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.